The Mongol Rally is an epic, boredom-crushing adventure. 10,000 miles from England to Mongolia in a car so crappy that most of them won't even finish. Last year's rally nearly finished me off, but I am back for more. If you're willing to put your life at risk, this adventure is for you. For those of you with a little more sense, why not let the professionals do the dirty work? It's going to be a wild ride. In 2004, the Mongol Rally had only six teams. Today, there are 297 teams. That's 879 people on their way to Mongolia. So why are you going on the Mongol Rally? Yeah. Does anyone know? <laughs> it's just a massive adventure. Ever since I can remember, I've always heard of Mongol Rally. It's always been a plan of mine. We are on mission. On mission from Mongolia. This is the next best thing to climb a mountain, in my opinion. Uh, there's four of us in here. It'll be quite cosy. They're all about six foot four as well, so I sit at the driving wheel like a little granny like this. Like. I was sitting in my desk in graduate school writing a paper, and I got a Facebook message from Jonathan Butt, who I've only met three other times in my life, inviting me to drive to Mongolia. We never had this conversation. You haven't seen us. You haven't seen us. Uh, I'm doing the Mongol rally because I just want to do something really, really stupid. <laughs> A very pleasant chap said to me, Leon, do you want to get muddy? I'm like, what do you mean muddy? No, hold it back. Here we go. What your diet has been for this event? Fight, fight, fight. You've got nothing. Look at you, sir. Go in the street to your parents. Meet my new friend. Paris. Where are you from? Greece, of course. Greece. <laughs> so, why? Are you crazy enough to drive to Mongolia? I don't know, it's just an instant decision. He told me a year ago, I'm doing this. I told him, all right. So you're driving to Mongolia. Oh, I hear some noises. Yeah. yeah. Steve, get in the car, man. We're going to Mongolia. <laughs> I'm not joking, get in the car. And we were off. Mongolia was barely 10,000 miles away definitely enough time to get ourselves into some trouble. Fellow travellers, desk dwellers, I am on the Mongol Rally again. Our first major pit stop was the rather ominous farewell party at a deserted castle in the Czech Republic. That's if we could even find it. It was here last year. It was. Steve, how the f*** are we going to get there? Man, we're going to find it. We're going to get there. What he said. He said basically to go left all the time. The Festival of Slow was a final chance to meet all the mad men and women who had signed up for the rally before we all started the dreaded drive east. There is an art to stickering a car, and I am an artiste. Oh, Switzerland! Yes? Yeah. Are you Swiss? Yeah. We have ketchup, Philadelphia, and bread. Ketchup, Philadelphia, and bread. That yeah. sounds good to me. Is, is your hair real? Absolutely, yes. Did you have a spare toothbrush? Actually, you know what? Hold on. These people are insane. So you're off to Mongolia? Yes. Why? Just, just to see if it's possible to do it in a <laughs> Nissan Micra. <laughs> I don't think it's Another possible. Nissan Micra. <laughs> oh my God. Um, are you sure this you is go? toothpaste? Let me, I just want to check this. <laughs> Why are you doing the Mongol Valley? Why? Yeah. Because it's a big adventure. Why go to Thailand when we can go to Kazakhstan? Hey, yeah, why don't you try it on? There you go. Do you think it's a good now look? I know, I know what I look like. It's, <laughs> not, it's nice. <laughs> ah, thanks. It's refreshing. It's it is. Let's do it. Yeah, and hug. Do a hug. <laughs> Where do I look like I'm from? France? Oh, right, that's it. Cut the camera. <laughs> Let's go. As crazy as all that was, the real madness was unfolding up at the castle itself. <laughs> Legend has it that the castle was once home to an infamous vampire slayer. Long dead, I hope. Yeah, I was using it for playing cricket earlier, so I'm really entirely in tune, so... Yeah, it sounds terrible. Is that it? 
After the party, we decided to do something mildly irrational by dabbling in some extreme tourism. I've been driving for the past couple of days. I'm heading off to Chernobyl. Yes, Chernobyl of nuclear implosion infamy. I should be there in uh, about a thousand miles, which, knowing the Ukrainian roads, may take another couple of days. We hit our first bout of car trouble just as we were entering Kiev. Maybe this was a sign not to go to Chernobyl after all. Fortunately, we found a local mechanic who spoke the Queen's English. I'm in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, and my car, as you can see, is being lifted off the ground. We cannot continue this race unless these sounds are fixed. What's he saying? At the moment, he doesn't know, but... So they found the problem. Supposedly, there's something wrong with the brakes. With the car fixed, Chernobyl was back on the menu. We met up with a guide who was supposed to keep us safe. Are these mosquitoes contaminated? Mm, I didn't check just this. Yeah. Okay, that's bad. <laughs> now I will show you remains of traffic lights here. What do these words mean? Uh, it's names of food. And they, they are here. So here, juices, uh, beer, meat, uh, sausage. Chernobyl was definitely an eerie place. Life stopped one dark day, and I was just about to find out why. I am 100 metres away from the nuclear power plant in Chernobyl. I have my Geiger counter. Now, doctors say that as long as it's below 0.3, you're safe. Unfortunately for me, I am far from safe because it is about 10 times higher than that. This means one thing, I am leaving. When we left Chernobyl and started our drive towards Russia, I came up with a cunning plan. You're probably wondering why I am in a Ukrainian sunflower field. That makes two of us. But what I am not wondering about is why I have two bottles of vodka. Both of these bottles are for the Russian police. If they stop us, they will receive free vodka and we all get to continue on our way to Mongolia. Unfortunately, the Ukrainian police got to us first. Steve told me that the main roads were what we were going to use. This is the main road. We met up with a fellow rallier who told us about a better road, but the better road turned out to be even crapper. Jay-Z was in Kazakhstan, but I was more interested in... Camels! We had heard stories about gun-toting bandits on the roads, specifically at night. With no town in sight, we had little choice but to make camp and risk the wrath of the Kazakhstani bandits. This is my SAS light, but it's totally pointless because Steve has a bigger light. We are in the middle of nowhere, 
Tomorrow we are going to Turkmenistan. Hey! That's the end. Go to bed, Steve. I just crossed the Turkmenistani border literally about 10 miles ago. As you can see, there is absolutely nothing in this desert, except an old Soviet warplane. Welcome to Turkmenistan. Soon, we were completely lost. We thought we were saved when we met up with some fellow rallies. What are you doing now? We're going to be driving to Turkmenbashi. Okay, cool. You're not, you're not stopping, though? No. no. Yeah, okay, mate. Oh, sure. All right. Bye. We were forced to ask the locals to save us. This chap is trying to tell me something, which I'm, I don't really know what. Turkmenbashi. Okay, let's, uh, I've asked him a question, and now he's putting on his little phone to translate it. Into tell us on camera. Um, our fellow rallyers had wisely deserted us. The local adults weren't much help, so we asked some nine-year-old girls to come to our rescue. Where are we now? What is the name of this town? <laughs> we gave up for the night and the next morning decided to follow the only road we could find out of Turkmenistan. We ended up finding a slightly unhinged but truly inspirational Frenchman. You speak English. <laughs> you can also speak French or Spanish if you je like. Je m'appelle Léon. Ah, je m'appelle François. Je voudrais un sandwich avec jambon et fromage. Ah, it will be difficult to find this. <laughs> You're riding your bike from Holland to yes. where? To India, Rishikesh. Okay, you, you uh, take the keys of your car and you want to follow on a bicycle. Stick on the road. Well, she's not going to go far. You know what? I want my car back. How long have you been doing this? Today's day 638. Did you just say 638 days? I started November 3, 2010. I don't like mentally sane people. They're too boring, you know? Just wake up, get to work. Always the same route every day. Always the same people, always the same coffee. Always the same type of bread. Always the same language. But you have put me to shame, man. We crossed from Turkmenistan into Uzbekistan. Our goal for the night was to reach the capital Tashkent. Instead, we got lost again and ended up eating Cheers. melons. I'm currently in an Uzbekistani village eating melons with my new friend. I think his name is Aziz, but I'm not sure. What do you do, Aziz? Aziz? I don't think his name, he was the one who was called Aziz. I don't think his name is Aziz, okay. Tonight, over there. Thank you so much. I'm sure you can't understand anything I'm saying, but I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything you've done. Thank <laughs> 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 Say hello. 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 Goodbye. Good. <laughs> Good morning. So we have to go. But thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. And you. <laughs> The hospitality of our hosts was magnificent. We decided to take a further look around and headed to the legendary city of Samarkand. The majesty of Samarkand was intoxicating, but it was time to get back on the road, straight into a cow jam. We have some friends on the road. Hello, cows. How are you? Good. Do you speak English? As we continued our drive east, we headed back through Kazakhstan and into Siberia.
the Holy Grail of Mongolia was in touching distance. If only we had known then what awaited us at the border of the Mongol Empire. Where am I now? I'm now on the Kazakhs, on the Romani. I am on the Russian-Mongolian border. Good news is that I've arrived at the Mongolian border. The bad news is that so have maybe 20 other Mongolian rally teams. How many hours have you been stuck here? 24, 25. So you seem very calm. I like it here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite happy. Have you bought any beers? No, I haven't. I, I only drink vodka. Yeah, but you got vodka. vodka. I didn't buy any vodka. No, you're not screwed. I haven't got any money. That's a rookie mistake. Well, there's a lot of small children outside the fence. That was actually the most humiliating thing yesterday when they were standing on the other side of the fence just laughing at us. It's like a Mongolian zoo where the animals and the kids from the village come up on the other side of the fence and just kind of like poke prodders with sticks yeah. and things. Can we have this one? Yeah. Hello, mister, can we have this one? The toilet facilities are good though. I know that's a joke. <laughs> what are the toilet facilities? <laughs> there's, there's like a little toilet facilities that way but it's, uh, it's the long drop of hell, I'm afraid. It's not even a long drop, it's a short drop. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, so we had to accept our fate. The Mongolian cow pen was going to be our home for the night. Nice and loud, and go in here, because I'm filming in a weird angle. Okay. Go when you're ready. Um, we were filming earlier today, and Steve got manhandled by a Mongolian border guard who snatched the camera from us. Okay. They raised all the footage from the past four days. We then had to go literally and beg them to give it back to us. We promised them that we wouldn't film anything else. But as you can see, we don't keep our promises. <laughs> <laughs> we met Amma in Turkmenistan, and now he's in the cow pen with us, mm -hmm. and now he's part of the illegal filming. So I have to be on the lookout because I think they have a spy. The spy is currently hiding behind a few cars, so we're okay. Okay, okay. We're really cool. Yeah. We're nearly there. They forgot us, so they're doing our paperwork now. But <laughs> everyone's in there getting hammered, so I'm just going to get some vodka and join them. Who's getting hammered? Everyone, all the border guards, a couple of rallies in there. I'm taking my Russian mushroom squirrel vodka. Oh shit. That's <laughs> Let me see. Well. What the hell is this? <laughs> Russian, vod Russian squirrel vodka. With mushrooms. With mushrooms. <laughs> Do you want to come and join? Quick some vodka? Quick question. Yeah. Oh my god, the spy's coming, Steve. You see? Lady Will, my fellow adventurer! We had finally escaped from the spy and the Mongolian border guards. Our next challenge was a little less threatening. Oh, what is your name? Yeah. Name? Hey. Are you Mongolian? Mongolian! What is your donkey's name? Of course. Give me five. Good man. It's for you. Oh. You want this? Yeah. What would you like? I only, I only have these, yeah, yeah. but they're for me. So cola, you, so cola. 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 Thank you so much. That's really okay. sweet. Okay. 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 The kids had taken nearly everything from us. Luckily, we had held on to the car. Our journey continued. It's not good to eat meat, right? No, no, no. Is it, does he bite? Yeah. Is he going to stay in the car? Car? Can I touch him? Yes. He is in the hunting and fox in the rapids. Now, we are trying to get to Holland. This way to Holt? Yes. That is the road to Holt. There's a lake there. Miraculously, we actually made it to Holt. Not so miraculously, we quickly got lost again. We were completely lost, absolutely lost. And we randomly met this man in the middle of nowhere, and 9989 is driving us to Holt. This is like a miracle, Steve. It is. It's a part of a miracle. This <laughs> better be going to Holt. <laughs> Leon? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh! Man, I really cannot believe you said this. We had found our way to Olgi and bumped into some fellow rallies. So you, guys, you guys want to follow us? So if you want to join, why not? Welcome. Yeah, we got beers and vodka, so we should be fine for tonight. <laughs> that sounds good. We have water and pasta, so we end up like this. The good 
good luck plan rubbed off on a few Mongolian families that needed our help along the way. He's asking the world's crappest mechanic to fix his car. He's, a, he's asking yeah. us for a belt, which we actually, believe it or not, have. Does this work? Is that good or is it, is it too small? This is an interesting moment. Do we say, F it and go on this bridge that looks like it is about to break? Or do we do the smart thing, which is just to go around it? Smart thing, dumb thing. Our daring shortcut enabled us to catch up with our friends. Then it all went pear-shaped. There's no bridge. <laughs> After finally crossing the waterless river, it was time for some camaraderie. Mongolian style. It's <laughs> all, all of us in one car. <laughs> They're going around and coming back in from the other side. I must say, you very much. After a much needed nightcap, morning brought with it a thing of sheer beauty. The first paved road we had seen in days. I could not contain myself. Oh, my God, have I never been happier to see a paved road in my life. I love you, pavement. I love you. Yeah. How are you, man? Yeah, I'm good. How about yourself? I hear rumours about your car that your exhaust have a look around. It's more than has exhaust. been completely annihilated and is sitting on top of your roof. Uh, yeah, those rumours are actually true. And now uh, you're waiting in line for the mechanics. They weren't alone with their problems. The suspension of our car had snapped on the treacherous Mongolian roads. Whilst we waited for the cars to be saved, we listened to a truly inspiring story. All we're doing is what we do in everyday life. Pushing ourselves about, getting in our small wheelchairs, going up curbs. I know in else of a car. We're just choosing to use these skills across Eurasia instead. Just astonishing to me, I tell you, because whenever I have a problem, like, I think of you and I'm like, man, I haven't got any problems. <laughs> you know, if you guys can do it, then I can bloody well do it. I and Will was sometimes not enough. We were about to meet some chaps whose dream had ended less than 400 miles from the finish line. So what happened? It's, uh, you had two cars. Yeah, yeah. One, one got stuck in the mud. A guy ran, in, ran into our wheel, so the bearing broke. So there was no transmission anymore. And uh, yesterday we had a tow through the river with the second car. And uh, we hit some rocks and the same bearing. On the same, on the side. Side. same side. Same side. Same side broke. Broke again. So yeah. well, we have to catch our flight. So. Tomorrow morning. Six. Six o'clock. It was then that I realized how lucky we had been on the journey. It was only last year we nearly lost our lives on a dusty Romanian road. These chaps were so much closer. How quickly an epic adventure can turn into a nightmare. Luckily, we were about to be rescued from doom and gloom by some lovely Italians. Could you sing us a song? Uh, which song? Whatever song you want. Italians gave us the lift we needed to push on. The finish line was tantalizingly close. Ulambato! We are close! But we're not there yet, so we have to calm down. Calm. I have 
waited 10,000 miles to smoke this cigar. Mongolian vodka. A symbol of Mongolia. Oh, thank you so much. Just over a year ago, we crashed in Romania and nearly died. And here we are, Steve and I, in Mongolia. And I am not getting off this car until this cigar is totally finished. But even if I have to eat it. Mongolia! We are here! Steve. Leon. This wouldn't have been possible without you, my friend. This wouldn't have been possible without you either. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Now what are we going to do? Eat. And then sleep. And then... Why don't we go to Beijing? It's a good idea. Beijing, here we come. Here we come. If you don't get the perfect shot, we have to do this again. Hello, cows. Do you speak English? What language are you talking? <laughs> Into tell us on camera. So we do it about how bad you're waiting here and a couple of We're gonna get there. There is an art to stickering a car, and I am an artist. I'm about to overtake someone. Joy. Oh my god, have I never been happier to see a paved road in my life. <laughs> <laughs>